Hi everyone, I'm Rosemary at Earth Corners and I'm back today to discuss what I'm reading for Book Riot's Read Harder Challenge. I've never really done a reading challenge before, but I like Book Riot a lot and I thought that the categories they picked were fun. So without further ado, here are the 24 books I have picked for Book Riot's Read Harder Challenge. Number one, a book written by somebody before they were 25 years of age. I'm picking Rimbo for this. Rim Rimbo is one of the original bad boy, like, dark, tortured poets. He was writing in France in the 1800s. Anyway, he died at the age of 37, um, and all of his work was written before he was 25, so this entire book would qualify. I am probably, I shouldn't say probably, I may only read A Season in Hell, which is one of his um, most famous pieces. It was written at a time when he was in a very turbulent place in his life. He was breaking up with his lover, Paul Verlaine, and getting shot in hotel rooms and drinking lots of absinthe and having drug-fueled hallucinations. So it should be fun. <laughs> I really like the fact that this is a side-by-side -side edition because I read a little French, not much, but enough that it is cool to be able to glance back and forth. So number one. Number two, a book that was written when the author was over the age of 65. Ada by Vladimir Nabokov. Um, Nabokov is one of my very favorite authors ever. I have not yet read Ada. It is a family chronicle, which I'm not really into family epics, but this one is about incest, tumultuous love affairs, and I'm definitely into that. Um, oh, that sounded really bad. I didn't mean it like that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Number three, a collection of short stories, is the short stories of Catherine Mansfield. I like Catherine Mansfield a lot for having not read very much of her. I read her journal, which is really lovely. Um, one thing that drew me to Catherine Mansfield was, I know I've mentioned this before, I'm a little obsessed by Virginia Woolf, and Virginia Woolf considered Catherine Mansfield her closest rival. Um, her short stories are supposed to be really perfect. Number four, a book published by an indie press. Again, this is a category I read a lot in. Probably this year I've read maybe half a dozen indie books already, so it was hard to pick the one that was going to count for this challenge, but the one I picked to count is one that I've already read, and it is Citizen by Claudia Rankine. This was an amazing book. I thoroughly, highly, unabashedly, with no reservations, recommend this book to everybody. Um, it is about race and uh, microaggressions in modern America. It's written as a book-length poem, not as a collection of poetry, um, which is something I enjoy reading, but I hadn't read much of as far as modern book-length poems. You know, I love Dante, and I love Paradise Lost, and I love lots of classic book-length poems, but it was really exciting to find one, find a modern book-length poem, especially one that's so relevant, so well written, so compelling. One cool thing about this that I also hadn't read before was that it's written in a second person. You know, Bright Lights, Big City is the classic example of that. I've never read Bright Lights, Big City. But the second person makes it so immediate and compelling. I thought it might feel a little gimmicky because I knew I knew how it was written going in, but it didn't feel gimmicky at all. So anyway, read this book. Oh no. I hear Arthur fussing. His bedroom is right behind this wall, and I think I may have woken him up. I really hope I didn't. Number five, a book by or about somebody that identifies as LGBTQ. This is another category that I read a fair amount in, um, so it was difficult to pick, again, the one that was going to count for this category. However, the one I ended up picking, just because I'd wanted to read it for a while, was Truman Capote, Breakfast at Tiffany's. I did read this... Um, January, I think. I liked it a lot. I, I like Truman Capote. I particularly like In Cold Blood, and I've always loved his short story, A Christmas Memory. It's one of my favorite stories from childhood. I would listen to it every Christmas, and I just adore that short story. So I was excited to read this book, which collects Breakfast at Tiffany's, as, as well as some of his other short stories, including A Christmas Memory. So, of course, I recommend Truman Capote to everybody. Number six, a book written by somebody whose gender is different from your own. Now, I identify as female, so this was a very easy category for me to fill. Um, I just picked the very first book I'd written by a man in 2015, and that turned out to be Desert Solitaire by Edward Abbey. Um, nature writing is a genre that I enjoy, although I don't read it as much as some other genres, but this is a classic in the nature writing genre. It's one of my husband's favorite books, which is why I picked it. Um, and it's a about a season that Edward Abbey spends in Arches National Park. I didn't love it as much as I've loved some other stuff. Edward Abbey can come across as kind of chauvinist and 
condescending and angry about the world, but it was still a really lovely book, even if it was number seven, a book that takes place in Asia. The book that I picked for that is The Vagrants by Yu Yun Li. I don't know much about this book. It's set um, at kind of towards the end of the Cultural Revolution, right before Tiananmen Square happens. And it is about a young woman that is executed for dissent. And that is a time and a place that I'm very interested in. This is a debut novel from this author whom I have not read and it's supposed to be excellent. So I am excited to put this on the list. Number eight, a book by an author from Africa. Things Fall Apart by Chinua Achebe. I am just embarrassed that I haven't read this before. It is a classic. It's supposed to be an amazing book. I, African literature is something I'm interested in, although I haven't read as much as I'd like, and this would be a really good place for me to start getting back in. Number nine, a book that is by or about somebody from an indigenous culture. Sherman Alexi, Indian Killer. This is both by and about someone from an indigenous culture. I went, had never read Sherman Alexi before and I chose this because I love crime fiction. Um, and this is a piece of crime fiction. I ended up not liking it. Sorry, this is one that I already read. I read it in January. Um, ended up not liking it very much. It, if I think, I think if I had approached this as a novel, qua novel, as opposed to crime fiction, I may have liked it a lot more, but as crime fiction, I didn't feel like it was very well plotted or compelling and there wasn't a clean resolution, which is one of the reasons I enjoy crime fiction. I read so much ambiguous literary fiction that I very much enjoy the clean resolutions that crime fiction bring, brings. This book didn't have that. I found it disappointing and I didn't like the prose as much as I was hoping to like the prose. Um, so I may try some other Sherman Alexi in the future, but not right now. Number 10 of microhistory. I looked all over the internet for a good definition of microhistory and couldn't really find one. So for the purposes of picking out this book, I decided to define it the way the Supreme Court defines porn. I know it when I see it. So <laughs> what I decided to pick was In the Beginning by Alistair McGrath. It. This is a book all about the King James Bible, um, more about the King James Bible as literature than as religion, um, but its place in history, how it's changed our words and our literature and how it's changed history and changed the history of religion in particular. Um, Alistair McGrath is a pretty well-known and renowned Christian theologian, academic, and scholar, so um, I expect this to be excellent. Okay, we're back. Um, he's back down for his nap, popped the pacifier back, and he fell asleep. I think clearly my voice was keeping him awake because, like I said, his room was just beyond the other wall. And now I'm upstairs. You can see my mason jar collection instead of my book collection. But hey, what can you do? So, number 11, a YA novel. I first thought I wanted to read Salman Rushdie's Harun in the Sea of Stories for this challenge, but I've been trying to shop my shelves a little more and not buy books if I don't really need, I mean, need <laughs> to buy books. Um, so, And then I realized that I had a trilogy on my shelves that I would define as kind of YA-ish that I had read the first one of back in high school, but I hadn't read any of them since then, and I'd never finished the trilogy. And I was seized by the sudden desire to do so, and then I realized that it fit very nicely into this very challenge. So the trilogy is Mervyn Peake's Gormenghast trilogy. Here it is. The first one is Titus Grown, and these are like vintage, maybe 1970s editions. Whoops, sorry, that's Gormenghast. That's the third one. The first one, <laughs> the three main weapons of the Spanish Inquisition. Right. The first one is Titus Grown. The second is Titus Alone. And the third one is Gormenghast. And I am pretty excited to go back to these once again, because like I said, I only ever read the first one when I was in high school, even though while I was in high school, I was a huge fantasy reader. That's almost all I read. So I don't know how I didn't finish these because I swear I must have read every fantasy novel in the damn bookstore. But here we go. 
Number 12, a sci-fi novel. Sci-fi is something else that I used to read a lot of in high school and hadn't read a lot of since. Um, I thought about doing the Ancillary Justice series for this, and I don't know why I didn't decide to do that. Anyway, the book I chose that I already read, I read it last month, um, is Octavia Butler's Kindred. Here is the copy that I own. Um, this is kind of like a time-traveling sci-fi sort of thing. Um, a young woman starts feeling dizzy, and she's sucked back into the past of the antebellum South, where she soon realizes that she has a strange and mysterious connection to a young white boy of that time period, and she is repeatedly drawn back and forth in time as she realizes that she needs to save his life because he is her direct ancestor. <laughs> Number 13, a romance novel. I actually love romance novels. However, I am obsessed with one romance author in particular. I'm on a quest to read everything she has ever written, and that author is Georgette Heyer. Last month, I binge read eight Georgette Heyer books. So, again, it was difficult to pick out which one counted for this, um, for this challenge. The one I'm going to show you isn't actually one of the ones that I read last month. It's just one that I happen to have. Most of the ones I read last month were ebooks, but this is just like a lovely Georgia Higher cover that I want to show you just because it is kind of emblematic of so Georgia Heyer was writing from the 1920s up to the 1970s. Her books are all kind of witty comedies of manners. They are totally sexless, so that I would say they're very sexy, if that makes sense. Like, there's no graphic sex at all, but, like, the hero and the heroine will, like, look at each other, and you're like... <gasps> so... <laughs> I feel like if you crossed Agatha Christie and Jane Austen, you would get Georgia Heyer. Um, she's got a very similar sense of humor to Jane Austen, and her prose is very, very similar to Agatha Christie or Dorothy Sayers, even more so than Agatha Christie. Dorothy Sayers is one of my all-time favorite authors, so Georgia Heyer. Oh, I should add that most of her books, whoops, upside down. I should add that most of her books are Regency romance novels. They're set during the Regency period in England. They're all she was British. They're all they're all set in England. Um, a few of them are set maybe 30 years older, the Georgian period. So if you like historical fiction, even if you don't think you like romance, I would say give these a shot. She also wrote detective fiction. Those are mostly written contemporaneously to when she was writing them. So you know. 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s. Those are a lot of fun too. I own a bunch of those as well um, because I love golden age detective fiction so much. If you want to start reading her, I would. My some of my favorite Georgia hires are Frederica, The Grand Sophie, and Venetia. Are maybe my three top favorite Georgia hires, but they're all good. I've never read one that I didn't like. Number 14, a National Book Award, Man Booker, a Pulitzer Prize winning novel. I don't know if it said novel, but prize winning book from the past 10 years. I chose The Brief Wondrous Life of Oscar Wilde. One of my good friends actually did his master's on dissertation on The Brief Wondrous Life of Oscar Wilde and maybe Gino Diaz in general. And I feel kind of guilty that I've not yet read this because he gave me this book and said, Rosemary, you need to read this. I'm doing my master's dissertation on it. And no, I still haven't read it, and that was years ago. So I decided I better get on it. I've heard nothing but good about this book, and I am excited to begin. Number 15, a book that is a retelling of a classic story, like a fairy tale, Shakespearean play, classic, something like that. This is one that I don't have a copy of on hand, but what I want to do for this is read um, Angela Carter, The Bloody Chamber. Again, this is some, a book that I've heard nothing but good about, and I really do like fairy tale retellings. I've read a fair amount of Robin McKinley, who I enjoyed a great deal, and I actually was talking to a professor at one of my local colleges who was teaching a class on fairy tales, tales, and mythology, and Angela Carter came up as one of the books that he recommends heartily and teaches in this class. Number 16, or maybe it's not 16, I keep losing count, and between each book I keep having to go back to the list and count, and this is starting to drive me crazy, so I think I'm going to forget about telling you which number it is. You can figure it out yourself. Anyway, number 16 maybe is an audiobook. Um, I actually do have a copy of this because I am following along in the text. You've seen this one before. Ulysses. I'm listening to a 1982 Irish radio broadcast of it. It's a lot of fun. I'm counting that as an audiobook even though it's not like published as an audiobook. It's available for free on their website. Um, I'm enjoying it way more hearing it read aloud than I was enjoying it reading it. So we'll just see how long it takes for me to finish 
that listen. I'm hoping I'll finish up at the end of the book. A collection of poetry. Poetry is a genre that I read a lot in, so this was yet another instance of me needing to just pick which one of the books I read that would count. I'd say this year so far I've read maybe three or four collections of poetry um, or book-length poems, but the one I picked was um, Adrian Rich, The Fact of the Door Frame. Um, this is a collection of her poetry um, up until 2001, I think. I really like Adrian Rich. She's a feminist, essayist, and writer. I've read um, Lies, Secrets, and Silence. I read that in college, and I loved it. And I'm halfway through of Woman Born. That'll probably be, finishing that will probably be in my April TBR pile. I started reading that when I was pregnant with my child, and it was really great. Um, a feminist take on motherhood. Um, Adrienne Rich is really wonderful. She's a wonderful poet. I've had this collection for a while. I've leafed through it, but I have not read it cover to cover. Reading collections of poetry cover to cover is something new that I'm trying this year. In the past, I've always just leafed through them and, you know, read, read bits and pieces as, as I was drawn to them. Um, but I started reading them cover to cover just a couple months ago, and I realized I get a lot more out of them that way. So that is what I'm going to do with this. A book that somebody else has recommended to you. Um, this book is not the book. This is a stand-in for the book. My husband asked me to read um, Henry David Thoreau's A Year in the Maine Woods. This is Walden. I just wanted to have something to hold in my hand. Um, I read Thoreau. I read Walden in high school. I liked it. Um, A Year in the Maine Woods is one of my husband's favorite books. He's from Maine. He loves nature writing. That's the main genre that he reads. And he told me that of all the books to read, uh, especially after I finally read Desert Solitaire, which is his all-time favorite book, that I should read A Year in the Maine Woods. So that's what I'm going to do. A book that was originally published in another language. Oh no, Arthur. <laughs> so now he's awake. He's hanging out with me upstairs and he's playing on the floor and giving me a soulful, Mama, why aren't you paying attention to me look? But I think I can finish the video. Next on the list is a book that was originally published in, in another language. And I actually read a fair amount in translation, and in fact, just in this pile, there is a book that I'm reading in translation, which is The Rimbo, that was way back in number one. Um, so I just picked from among the books that I wanted to read, and I used it as an excuse to get another Nabokov in there. I love Nabokov. Have I mentioned that? I love Nabokov. And I have not read much of his earlier stuff. I've read a fair amount of his later stuff. So reading King, Queen, Maeve will be pretty exciting. Next up, a graphic novel or a graphic memoir. I am excited to read Alison Bechdel's Fun Home. I really like Dykes to Watch Out For. I don't have any of the collections, but I'd read them here and there. Um, I thought about buying the Dykes to Watch Out For um, Omnibus, but I saw this um, in Barnes & Noble, and I did like the idea of something that had a tighter narrative to it as opposed to more an episodic sort of thing. So this should be good. I actually usually really enjoy reading about the relationship between fathers and daughters. So this ticks that box for me. Next up, a book you would consider a guilty pleasure. You know, I don't really spend much time feeling guilty about my reading. I kind of redefine it in my mind as like some light reading that I almost don't really consider to be reading because it's so easy. And the book I picked for that was Victoria Thompson's From Her Gaslight Mystery series. This is a series of mysteries set in like 1890s New York City about a midwife, Sarah Brandt, and her... Um, friend slash love interest, an Irish cop named Frank Malloy, and they go about solving crimes, and Sarah delivers babies, and adventures ensue. So that's what I'm going to read. There's um, Murder in Amsterdam, Amsterdam Avenue is coming out in May. It's number 17. I have read every single one of them. I will continue to read them for as long as she puts them out. Probably. Next up, a book published before 1850. This, again, not such a hard category for me. I read a lot of classics, but the one I picked was Daniel Defoe, Journal of a Plague Year. This is an old edition that I have here. I am very interested in medical writing in general, and I love reading about epidemics. I like reading about death. I, I like reading memoirs, even though this isn't really a memoir. But Daniel Defoe is a fun writer, so I'm excited to read this book. A book published this year. Now this is one, it's not out yet, so I can't show you a copy, but I'm really excited about it. It is All Who Go Do Not Return by Shulem Dean. It is a memoir writing about his Orthodox Judaism and his loss of faith. I know I've said this a ton, but I love learning about religion in all sorts of ways. And I've been interested in Orthodox 
in ultra-Orthodox Judaism since reading lots of, I'm sure I'm going to pronounce this wrong, Chaim Potok. In, in high school, I've read, you know, My Name is Asher Lev and The Chosen and The Promise and a few others, not remembering their names. And so I'm really interested to read this when it comes out at the end of this month. Um, you will definitely, definitely be hearing more about this book. Anyway, last, finally, last, a self-improvement book. In January, I read Marie Kondo's The Life-Changing Magic of Tidying Up, which is a really fun book. I don't want to talk about it too much, but I did do a review on my on my blog, so I'll link that below. And I will link all of the reviews I've done of the books that I've read down below as well. That's it for now. That was all 24 books that I'm planning to read for the Book Riot Read Harder Challenge. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you again soon.